if, if he was uncertain about his future, just come out and say that. Like, no one would blame you. Like, we totally get it. Like, you've been doing, you've been in the NFL for more years than, you know, playing in the NFL than you did in your life not playing in the NFL. So, like, we get it if you want to take some time to make this decision. Like, that's that's totally understandable. It wasn't like you were waffling whether that like, you were trying to get more money from your organization like Aaron Rodgers was doing in Green Bay. Like, we knew what this was, Tom. Like, take your time. Nobody, nobody rushed you in it. And that's the thing I don't get. Like, no one's going to force Tom Brady to do anything. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Thank you for watching on YouTube. Rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. It is that time of week where we have a guest join us, our oldest friend on The Right Time, when you really stop and think about it. Check him out on ESPN Radio on the afternoons with Chris Canty. I think I got that right. Shannon yeah. Penn, what's yeah, going on? And that's, and that's weird too when you introduce me like a guest like what i'm no guest I, put, look, I come through and put my feet up on the couch i'm no guest but but i get it anyway yeah you a day one like, like a literal day one <laughs> like i help, I help move the furniture in the house <laughs> right right forget about the fact and here's one for you that i bet you hadn't quite thought about you and I have been doing radio and things like that together for 15 years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's been literally 15 years. Dog, that's before every game was shot in HD. Like they were still yes. doing games in standard definition when we got started in this thing. <laughs> I think the first time we did a show was before I got an HD TV. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think really a- think that. I think it was a big thing for us. We had a, a flat screen. Like, that was the hotness. Get, just get yes. a flat screen. It, was, it wasn't HD, but it was a big flat screen TV. Wow. Now, I, I tell people, we talk, we've talk. we talked about this many times, but for the folks who are new, Shannon and I worked together at uh, 850 The Buzz and 620 The Bull in Raleigh uh, for many years. And then when I got the ESPN radio show, I was lucky enough to have him join and produce that show and so when this moved over to podcast he stayed over with esp and radio but i think it was either the first show we did together or the second show we did together we were doing uh sunday morning radio and mm-hmm. the thing you got to understand about sunday morning radio is there is somebody watch, watching or excuse me there is somebody listening on sunday morning but it ain't your boss right <laughs> it's it's whoever happens to be in the car but the bosses they've had enough they're taking the day off so you basically do whatever you want. So one morning, Shannon had to pull for the bumper music, LL Cool J's I'm Bad, which works every single time. Like if you remember in the last dance where they put that on, that's why I was like, oh, okay, we're not playing around. Like oh, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is an understanding. And so it came on and we both got so hyped and so crunk while that was on. We basically read two verses of I'm Bad Run in the morning on Sunday Sports Radio AM. in Raleigh, North Carolina. Yes, on, on the AM on, dial. On the AM dial, right. Early <laughs> Sunday morning. Like, we were wilding out way too early on a Sunday morning, but it was all good, though. Yo, the other thing about that show was is the homie Amnon came on before us. It was guys that had a computer show. Mm-hmm. And I just want to mention Amnon because I actually think this is one of the great stories ever. Like, you meet people that is, like, this is just an interesting detail. So, Nissan Cars. If you want to go to their website, it is NissanUSA.com. And you may be wondering, why is it not Nissan? And the answer is our buddy Amnon. So Amnon's last name is Nissan. Right. And so he and his brother have a business, and they got Nissan.com first. And if you go to that website, it is all about how Nissan, the car company, has gone to the greatest lengths to try to wrest <laughs> away the domain <laughs> Nissan.com from our guy Amnon. Except they need to understand, if I'm not mistaken, Amnon was in the Israeli army. That man ain't giving up. Hell no. Nah. Look, and I'm like, I do this. This is what I do. This is not a game. This is not a drill. Like, I've been about this life. I've been waiting for this moment. I put my name on this literally from day one. You ain't getting this from me. (laughs) I love damn dog for that. Like, when I realized, like, you go to that website, there ain't no no crisis management firm involved. It ain't no PR. (laughs) But if you want to know the fight that our buddy Amnon has had to put up against Nissan, you can go look it up. Amnon is fighting. And you know all the money that Amnon could probably get for that domain from Nissan? 
that ain't the point. Not, not happening. He's doing it on principle and principle alone. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man, so me and Shannon go way, way back in this. Um, and that actually reminds me, because we're going to get to talking about Tom Brady and his retirement. Mm -hmm. But um, what did you think of the way the last two weekends ended for Duke basketball? Oh, my gosh. It was it was historic. It was and, and, it, and it feels, too, before we look, look back, like just looking ahead with this real quick, like the way that these last two weeks ended with them getting blown out by UNC and then losing to my wife's alma mater, Virginia Tech, in the ACC championship game. Had to throw that in there. It just feels as though like this feels like one of these Duke teams that's going to lose in the second round. Like they're going to lose to one of these upstart teams or, or what have you. But, but, but going back, though, like it's been amazing, like for the Carolina fans to enjoy that. Like it felt like, it felt like a, a, a win for everybody, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, dog, dog, because the thing is, like I'm kind of a Carolina fan, but I realized I just hated Duke. Right. Like I went to Carolina for grad school, but I didn't like grow up as a Carolina fan. But if you come in hating Duke, you can jump on that Carolina thing real quick. But then I get away from it. I'm not around the same people and friends. And honestly, college basketball kind of stinks now. So, you know, I'm not really like in and on that. Man, listen, I went up to the Dork Fest in Boston because um, <laughs> I was doing this interview with Calvin Johnson. And I'm riding back on the Amtrak and I didn't even make any plans around watching the game because I didn't think the game was going to be any good. And the last thing I wanted was a Coach K love fest, right? Right. Dog, I'm watching as that score keeps getting bigger in the second half. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't missed Durham that much in the nine years since I left. I looked at that, and I was just like, oh, damn. And then Krzyzewski went out and embarrassed them boys in the post-game press conference, right. and then they lost Virginia Tech to like legitimately raise the question, did you lose your team by Trump, you know, because your pride wouldn't let you just kind of fall back in that moment. But the reason I wanted to bring it up was me and Shannon got some history in having discussions about Duke. Mm -hmm. And it is fascinating to look at what that program is now versus what it was when you and I were talking about it. Because it was a herb fest, man. And it was a herb fest to the point where the kids had started noticing and the ones that didn't want to be herbs wasn't really trying to rock with Duke. And we were saying this, and you remember how much people would argue with us. And it, it's funny, too, because you, you think about that. I, I, first name that comes to mind for me is Demarcus Nelson. Because Demarcus yes. Nelson went to Duke, but he was never at Duke. Demarcus Nelson was always at Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> and like, look, I just ball there. I, I, just, I just play ball there. I don't really... I don't really rock with them dudes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> now, he, DeMarcus Nelson was the one guy, and this is the thing that would happen with Duke, is they, you know, you would have the stuff like every time the ref made a bad call, like everybody moves in unison, right? And doing right. all the super clapping and everything and the walk alls to be out there. But there would always be like one dude that was like, yo, what are we doing? You know what I'm right. saying? Like, <laughs> like, 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 dude, the chair, no. We look like a bunch of herbs right now. You know, there's right. always be that one guy that's just sitting there. Demarcus Nelson for a stretch was that one dude just sitting there like, no, nah, I, I don't. It's like, like what was, I stand for. Right. You would always have the one dude who was self-aware enough to know, like, like what's going on. Like, hell, I'm, I'm trying to get to the lead and let it be known. But, but the rest of that herb activity that you guys are doing, no, I'm, right now I'm herb adjacent. And I ain't trying to really be about that life. And, and, but, but to your point, like the way we talk about Duke and look at Duke, and more importantly, the way the Duke players look, it's, yeah. it's, totally, it's totally different. I don't think, because I want to shout you out on game theory, but I think you brought up that great point too. It's like the way they looked at the, the players over the course of time, it started to change. And yeah. so, go ahead. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Relationships take work. A lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well, but how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? Now this month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship, the one you have with yourself. Whether it's hitting the gym, making time for your haircut, or even trying therapy, you are your greatest asset. So invest the time and effort into yourself like you do for other people. I've been going to therapy for a few years now because I just need to get in touch sometimes and tell myself it's okay to feel things even if they don't feel the best. And I think that's something that you should keep in mind when considering therapy. Now, BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with the therapist in under 48 hours. 
Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Bomani. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Bomani. According to the latest research, 90% of employers plan to make enhancing the employee experience a top priority in 2022. After all, a happy workplace is key to attracting and keeping great employees, such as allowing for more flexibility in work schedules or making more time to connect with colleagues. And if you need to add more employees to your team, there's ZipRecruiter. Their matching technology helps you find the right people for your roles fast. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Bomani. ZipRecruiter uses powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up with your job. Then it proactively presents these candidates to you. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply for your job, which encourages them to apply faster. No wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one rated hiring site in the U.S. based on G2 ratings. Find the right employees for your workplace with ZipRecruiter. Try it for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Bomani. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash B-O-M-A-N-I. The big one, remember the How We Hoop video? And for those of you who don't know, go to YouTube and look up Duke Basketball, How We Hoop. Because they had to, they basically had to start a full-on campaign to let the young blacks know, like, hey, it's fun to play basketball here. We actually go up and down. Like, they had, you know, they had written all the benefits of the white stereotypes that had been put on them, except it went too far. And people thought they was out here, like, running the motion offense all the time. And they're like, wait, ho, 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 ho. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We're a little torn. But I think this is maybe the most interesting part of it. They made the changes in who they recruited and how they ran their program. Right. The results actually haven't changed. (laughs) Well, I mean, what, K has won what? Three championships in the last what fifteen years or so, right? Am I am I am I is my math off? No, it's 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 three championships in the last twenty one years. Twenty one years, okay, okay. Oh one, twenty ten, and twenty fifteen. But like, if you, I guess the line of demarcation on this is kind of Kyrie Irving, mm-hmm. right? Irving is the first one. You go from Kyrie Irving to Austin Rivers to Jabari Parker. You know, like this this recruiting game that they're playing now really kind of starts with Kyrie. But if I'm not mistaken, if you take the ten years from Kyrie on and compare it to like the ten years before it's really not that much different because it's really hard to like switch out a new team every single year meanwhile right. roy williams was like i don't change for nobody <laughs> i'm doing the exact and, and guess what there was some you know the highs weren't as high i mean they, they won that championship in 2017 but you know you didn't have in that stretch after that a team like the 09 team or the team like the 05 team but right. the results still roughly the same Right, right. And, and to your point, too, and it goes, and you mentioned Kyrie, and, and I think with Kay and the philosophy even changed the year prior with the, with the John Wall late recruitment, you know? And, and <laughs> well, look, I, I got it. Yeah, exactly. Recruitment, because I don't think they really wanted him at Duke per se, but you had to give the perception that we were willing to recruit a player like this, a guy who was in our own backyard in Raleigh, and that we knew it was going to be a one and done, but we were willing to take. And, and they got into it relatively late compared to schools like NC State and eventual Kentucky where John Wall went. Yeah. But I think that really turned the per- – at least started to change some of that perception for Duke. Yeah. You know why I really wish that John Wall would have gone to Duke, aside from the fact that it would have been the most confusing thing ever? <laughs> Fuck. Rock with me here. Ride with me. Ride with me. Okay. So, John Wall, if you don't know, is from Raleigh. And I don't want to say, because I don't know any of who John Wall's friends were in Raleigh. Like, I don't want to pretend that I know exactly who he was hanging out with. However, if John Wall had gone to Duke, that means the homies is coming to hang out at Duke. And I'm telling you, John Wall didn't have no homies that went to Duke, right? That was like, (laughs) yo, yo, I'm going to see you there. You know, there there wasn't, you know, me and you, we can go together. There wasn't, there, there, I, I feel very confident saying that, right? So that meant that John Wall would have been the dude bringing his homies from around the way onto the yard 
except the yard is Duke. And I would have loved to have seen it. And you want to know why I would have loved to have seen it? Because the little known fact about the homies that show up on the yard is they do numbers. <laughs> like they they hit the yard and they beat them bourgeois girls and they be making it happen. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why, but they be making it happen. Like people are like, oh man, they probably be looking at them crazy till they not. Right. <laughs> right. The, the the clientele on the yard would go up. I yes. like that. Yeah, like like <laughs> show like show me, somebody get me the whole video footage of when Newport News showed up to Georgetown with Allen Iverson. What that drive? Like a couple of hours? <laughs> that was easy. That was local. That's like, what? Well, that's like, what? Three and a half, maybe? Yeah. Easy. Except, they, except they was getting to Georgetown and they was like, hey, Howard right over there. All right, y'all shot a roll. <laughs> like, yeah. But and you had Richmond was what, an hour away too. So it, 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 like Georgetown stayed very local for Chuck and the fam. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. But like, if if the John Wall crew would have been on the yard at Duke, oh my god! Like, I feel like like I feel like Kinston was a little too far for Brandon Ingram's folks to be all down there. And I wouldn't be surprised because I remember this: Brandon Ingram had that older brother who played college basketball. And I actually would not be surprised if they had told Kinston, "Hey, no, y'all got to fall back. But be back. Give it a year." And that's one of those two as well, one of those uh, tentpole kind of recruitments for Duke with the Brandon Ingram that you bring up in the, in the history there with him being from Kingston, which is, you know, um, uh, Carolina town, you know, Jerry Stackhouse and the like. So yeah. for him, for them to land a guy like Ingram, tattoos, the whole nine, which didn't typically look like the prototypical Duke player and from an area that typically Duke wouldn't re- doesn't recruit well, that was a big one for them as well, at least hold for up, the hold perception. Up, hold on, not just tattoos. Tattoos that look like they got done in a garage, like well, like like, a- like absolutely nothing about Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram showed up with them braids. Brandon Ingram showed up with them cheap tattoos, and I don't have a problem calling them cheap tattoos because if you look at him in the NBA, he went and got like tattoo plastic surgery and had all of his tattoos upgraded to be more befitting of a man of his stature at this point in his journey, right? Like he had, he, he had a tattoo BBL. Like yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, yo, I can't be out here living like this. I just didn't know no better back then. But when he showed up, I was just like, oh, okay, we going all in. All right, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? And, and props to them, by the way, for it. I still couldn't believe that he even wanted to do it. Like, that whole thing had changed. But what people didn't know is me and Shannon were talking about this on the radio, and people were getting mad at us because I don't think they were getting it. It wasn't a projection. I'm like, I'm telling you what y'all look like in these streets. Y'all got a program that appeals to parents, not a program that appeals to kids right and then they went and flipped it all up and ain't nobody sent me a thank you card yet <laughs> <laughs> like you, you put the pressure on and you brought it to their attention nah we so we need to give Bo his flowers right now for helping do matter of fact yeah. we need to make you a recruiting assistant right now for what you ain't for that program i mean and look i rose above myself it ain't like i was out here rooting for him you know what i'm saying i wasn't like yo this is what we need to do to come up You know, that wasn't my outlook at all on the situation, but it was. It was just like, yo, I just don't. Like, it's very interesting being in an area where college basketball is the thing because it's grown-ups talking about it, and grown-ups, especially with college sports, it's grown-ups, and it's grown white people, and I specify white people because very often, like, people are like, I just don't understand why Texas A&M has never been able to get it together in in football. Now, obviously, they got a little thing going right now, and the answer is, have you ever talked to a black person about College Station? Like, 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 have you done it one time? Have you asked their opinions? Maybe that'll answer your question. Like, yo, I just don't get why Arizona State can't get it right. We black, man. Like, not that black people can't enjoy Arizona State, but we're not looking at this stuff the same way right. as y'all. And so with Duke, they just weren't getting, like, you got to sell this to kids. And once, it, once they weren't doing well, and they looked up and realized that like, when they had all the white dudes and they was kicking ass, it was cool. But when they looked up and they had a bunch of white dudes and they was losing, all of a sudden it was, we need to step up our recruiting. And then they hit us in 2009 with something about how they had, you know, people were like, yo, this recruiting class coming in is really uh, stepped up. And that recruiting class at the time was Tyler Thornton, Josh Harrison, and uh, who was the other one? Andre Dawkins. Mm -hmm. That was what they was all excited about. (laughs) It was just three black dudes. 
And they got Dawkins early, too, because I think he reclassified so he can come in earlier. He did, yeah. <laughs> he, re- he reclassified because Memphis owed Elliot Williams bailed after one year. He was like, yo, I'm not, I'm not doing this. It was wild because Elliot Williams bailed, and they only had three black dudes left on the team. And so they got Andre Dawkins to reclassify. And then what did that team do that was in that panic? They went and won a national championship. <laughs> right. Right, which which then which then added to their uh, I guess their um, which added to their new newfound recruiting uh, direction. Shall yeah, we it say? was the start. It was the start, man, because it didn't make no sense. They won no national championship that year. Like that was the year they played Butler in the championship mm-hmm. game. It was just like dog, nothing. This was an awful, terrible game. Not mm-hmm. nearly as bad as the Butler UConn game the year after. So I, I did want to ask you though. I, I was we're talking about college basketball, and here we're on the eve of the NCAA tournament. Why, why do you think the perception or the excitement or the focus of college basketball isn't what it used to be? Because I like I find myself like I'll parachute here and there and on on some of the bigger games, and obviously once the tournament. But as far as it being the the games being appointment viewing for me, outside of when Zion came in a couple of years ago, I just haven't found myself as interested. Why do you think the, the shift has happened? Two things. One. College basketball used to be the best players in the world under 22. That's not the case. The best players in the world under 22 now are playing the NBA, right? The other thing is you don't develop any familiarity with these teams. You just right. don't. Right, because of so many of the one and dones. And, and one and done. I mean, and now the transfer game is coming in or whatever, but there was something to be said. Like, think about this. Derek Coleman who was like freshman superstar in 1987 when Syracuse got to the championship game. Derek Coleman stayed three more years, right? We saw Christian Leitner play in four final fours. You got familiar with teams. Teams had personalities. You got to like people. You got to dislike people. But you knew reasonably what you were getting when you were turning on to watch a college basketball game. I don't know who played for nobody. How could I possibly know who plays for anybody? Like, I mean, it's just not, it, it's, there, there's nothing to get you to hold on to. Like, we talk about this with the, you know, it's the issue coming up with the NBA, where because of the way the players are handling, you know, where they play, when they play, all that kind of stuff, that, like, there are no rivalries in the NBA right now, except for, like, Net Sixers, and that just started a week and a half ago. Right. right. And it's bec- and it's because we don't have the familiarity, you don't have the back and forth, the over and over. Like you just don't have those things. And so in college basketball, like Carolina Duke, man, I don't really know who plays for those teams anymore. I don't have an answer to, to you for what the personalities are. And the coaches ain't no fun no more. Like remember when coaches used to wear funny clothes and like tell <laughs> actual jokes and have accents and stuff like that. None of it. Like all the everything that kind of made college basketball cool before. It's just not there. So I'll do the tournament, and the tournament will still be good. Like, it'll still right. be interesting. But the play just isn't that good. You know, like, we don't, we don't get to see anybody enough to, like, actively dislike people. Or just that guy that's, all, that's out there that for whatever reason. Like, you remember, what was the homie's name from Arkansas? The little dude that shot from the parking lot. Alex Dillard. <laughs> right, 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 and 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 I think that goes to the the bigger point. Like we don't have that appointment viewing. We don't have the the team or the players that we can all focus on to love, or more importantly, to hate. You know, like right, we, and, and that's the hardest part too. Is it's trying to find these guys. Like I know, you know, Gonzaga out there in the Pacific Northwest will have guys and and that'll be there, but yeah, that's not really rocking for us over here in the East Coast. So, <laughs> so, so right. I'm lost. They- Yo, with Gonzaga, I've been seeing people like, yo, is Gonzaga the new Duke? No, nah, because they white dudes just there. Like, like they like like I have never disliked one of the Gonzaga white dudes. I didn't dislike Adam Morrison. I didn't dislike they all uh, uh, the other ones. Uh I don't dislike uh <laughs> Dan Dickow. <laughs> yeah, Dan, yes, Dan Dickow. Um Blake Step, remember him? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, they, they just over there winning a bunch of games. Now, this one they got now is cold as he want to be. Uh, the yes. home for dude. Right, right. It's hard to believe he exists in real life. <laughs> just like, what, like, he's like, he's like the, he's like the, what is he, like a buck fit, like seven foot tall, a buck 50, something like yeah. that? Like, it's like, what if I was seven feet tall, but could hoop? <laughs> so, so he's tall man, not big man. 
Oh, he's so tall, man. But tall man blocking like three and a half shots a game. Tall man got handles. Tall man is taking people to the rack at seven one. Right, right. So, so he's like he's like one. And is it Chet? Is it Holmgren? Is his last Holm, name? Yeah, Chet Holmgren. Holm, yeah, Chet Holmgren. Like he's like the one, but that that gives. That's to, to our point here is like we don't have those guys, you know. Like I don't know who I'm looking forward to Chet going up against in the tournament, right? You know, player way, or team. This is how you know the dude game doesn't change. There is no way in the world that in the year 2002 that Chet Holmgren, if if he was gonna leave the Big Ten, he wasn't going nowhere but Duke. Like Shashevsky <laughs> wouldn't even have to recruit him. He just have to come to the living room and be like, you know what it is. <laughs> it's it's time. Career achievement unlocked. I am in your <laughs> living room. You know what I'm supposed to say. You know what you're supposed to say. How about you just sign your name on this paper and I get back on the next plane home? Yeah, let's save us all some time. <laughs> See, you <this> <laughs> See you this yeah. summer. Come through. <laughs> Our friends at CarMax have reimagined car buying to deliver a truly flexible shopping experience that puts you in control. Because at CarMax, you have the freedom to shop online and on the lot. Once you find the right car, you can buy online with home delivery in select markets or choose express pickup at your local CarMax. And CarMax has you covered with a 30-day money-back guarantee up to 1,500 miles. Learn more at CarMax.com. CarMax, car buying reimagined. By the way, uh, NFL free agency has started. I guess I should ask, and I'm asking sincerely because I've had uh -huh. my head on my own keister and I haven't been able to really pay attention to us so much. Uh, are your Giants doing anything to improve themselves? Not really. And, and 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 that's fine. Like they signed Tyrod Taylor yesterday as a backup okay. for Daniel Jones, so they'll do as, the, as, a, as the, a backup, as a backup well, for Daniel Jones. Like he may well in theory as a backup, but I wouldn't be surprised that if he'll get some starts this year. But they, I don't have very much expectation for the Giants. They still got to move some salary cap, so it's very much going to be the last year of Jones. And and the question is, what do they do next year moving forward at the quarterback position? Because I very much see this being the last year for Daniel Jones, and they'll and they'll move on. And it, it's time, you know. Like right. I, I tried. Go ahead. No, no, you, you, you go. I want to. I don't want to interrupt. What was about to get emotional? Go ahead. It's yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's time. You know, and I don't hate Daniel Jones per se. I just <laughs> <laughs> he was just never that guy. Like for him to be successful, you needed everything to line up for the Giants, and that was never going to happen. So you, Daniel Jones wasn't going to go out there and win games for you. You know, like he was. He was, you know, a game manager who was quote unquote sneaky athletic, but that's about it. Very limited. They tried to go out and give him weapons last year. That didn't work. Now it's time to let him ride off in the sunset for this one last year. You know, get a jump start on the rebuilding process and go from there. But it can't, it can't keep. We can't keep doing what we're doing. Essentially, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you this though. Shout out to uh, Terod Taylor, your uh, your Hampton, Virginia homie, right? Mm -hmm. That man's reached that point of that high paid backup life. And that them's the kind of jobs brothers across industries typically don't get. You know what no. I'm saying? Like, like, like he he get paid eight figures to wear that baseball cap. Like, like Chase Daniel just resigned and, and he's gonna yes. be a backup. I don't think he threw a pass last year, but but them Yo, checks cash. He the pioneer, because when they gave him that crazy number, I think I forget who it was. Was it the Eagles or whoever it was where he was a backup? Or the Vikings, I think. It, anyway. One of them gave him like $7 million a year to be the backup, and that changed the game for the Terod Taylors of the world. So, like, sh shout out to him. He's bad luck every step of the way, all that stuff. But, hey, man, that man done made $70 million, and now he ain't got to get hit no more. They ain't going to poke you in the, in the lung with no needle again because you ain't even got to go out there to, 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 to earn that money. You know what I'm saying? Look, you seventy mil. You got a ring as a backup in Baltimore. Like you coasted now at this point. Yeah. Like, I don't need to. I don't need to play. I don't need to get hurt anymore. I'm just cash these checks. Big win. Big win. Uh, what were you surprised? Tom Brady hung it up. I mean, uh, unhung it up. After forty days, huh? He was like, "That's that's <laughs> it." Huh? After forty days, right? Like, there's only so much trash you can take out. There's only so much. You know, uh, Netflix and, uh, and HBO Max you can get caught up on. <laughs> he just sat. He just sat around. Was like the hell am I doing you know but I, I'm not surprised the thing that that and this is more recent Tom Brady senior yesterday came out and essentially was blaming the media for Tom retiring saying guys like Adam Schefter and Jeff Darlington you know came out with the reports of him retirement and, and that which led to the announcement what the hell is that garbage come on <laughs> like, Tom, like Tom Brady is a grown bleeping man he's in his he's in his 40s 
Dude got seven Super Bowl titles. Like, it, no one was forcing him to retire. Like, if you didn't feel that way or if you weren't certain, just say that when these reports came out. There was no reason for you to then put out a, a statement and then go on the whole retirement tour. Nah, that's on you. That's on your son. And I get it. You're a father. You're supposed to protect your kid. I get all of that stuff. But Tom didn't have to come out and, re- and say his retirement. So, so yeah, that's I don't know where Senior was going yeah. with that stuff. No, I not. I- yeah, I get protecting your kid, but like you said, as we all talked about, that man, 47, uh, however damn old he is, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it is the other part, too. And Shannon got this ultra-talented daughter who one day could be famous. Like, I say that sincerely, right? Shannon, don't be out here uh, putting all your cape in public. Like, it's a little different with a daughter, but like with a son, the public cape from your parents doesn't work. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work. Like, I think about when I was in college, my homeboy had this roommate that, you know, at the time, I don't think we liked that much, but not because anything was wrong with him. We just college freshmen, you know what I'm saying? And so somebody got the bright idea to pull the prank while he was out in class, stealing his mattress. So he took his mattress out the room and he took it somewhere else. And he was kind of freaking out about it, but like he wasn't a tight, you know, like that. That wasn't, I mean, not, I'm saying, not saying it's a judgment, but he ain't the one to be like, yo, somebody about to give up if I don't get my mattress back right like he just wasn't that guy and toward the end of the night his mom called the room because you know it's back in the day of the landline and so my whole boy who had orchestrated the whole thing answered the phone and she asked if uh, her son was there and of course we said no because why would he be there he didn't have a mattress (laughs) and his mom said on the phone to my boy don't you think it's time for the game to be over now, she was absolutely right. Right. She was absolutely right. But that did that boy no favors with us. And that's what I think of every time I see one of these parents put on their cape in public. Don't you think it's time for the game to be over? Ain't nobody ask you. Right. 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 That's and, how I feel about Tom Brady. The media, the media made Tom Brady retire. How? How? Right, like like I said, he should, if if he was uncertain about his future, just come out and say that. Like no one would blame you. Like we totally get it. Like you've been doing, you've been in the NFL for more years than you know playing in the NFL than you did in your life not playing in the NFL. So like we get it. If you want to take some time to make this decision, like that's that's totally understandable. It wasn't like you were waffling whether that like, you were trying to get more money from your organization like Aaron Rodgers was doing in Green Bay. Like we knew what this was, Tom. Like take your time. Nobody nobody rushed you in, and that's the thing I don't get. Like. No one's going to force Tom Brady to do anything, you know? And right. so for his, for his father to come out and cape for him in the way that he did and try to blame somebody else for his son's indecision was was totally use, uh, It was unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. Like, ain't, I can only see one person who could even potentially have the power to make him do something. And I am rather curious what she thinks. <laughs> Yo, I can't blame her, man. I've been married to this dude for how long? And this, like, incredibly greedy mistress of football that he has that, by right. the way, physically abuses him, right? Like, all that stuff that goes on there. I'd be so tired of him playing football. I can't blame anybody that would be like, nah, man, time up. Right, not to mention, too, like, it's not just, like, him, you know, playing and being a professional athlete. Like, he's the type to go above and beyond with his level of dedication and the amount of time that it takes for him to get at that level. So I totally get why why you know Giselle would feel as though it's time so that we can you know she can get her husband like I get all of that but at the same time I guess it was hard for him though still knowing that he can play at a high level because I think this would be totally different if it's if, if if he was at the Peyton Manning point where you know injuries and he couldn't throw the ball anymore like things like that no Tom Brady yeah. was second in the MVP and was almost in another Super Bowl like he's like yo I'm still at the top of my game like I can't walk away right now knowing that I'm still playing at this level you know you know what he is? He's, it's interesting. He's too old to be at that point where if he has a bad season that he thinks, oh, okay, I can turn this around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, like he is beyond that age. And that to me is what is crucial is that he is not at that point where he could just say to himself, like, if you're like 37, 38, like somewhere in that range, that's where you, oh, sorry, I had to make sure my, uh, my, all my stuff is still working. But like, if you're that age, that's where you have a bad year and you're like, nah, I just wouldn't help. 
-hmm. but I can turn this thing around. You have a bad year at 45. You, you, no, no, that's just what it is. Right, right. And, I, and, and, and too, like, and, and at least one thing I do appreciate from Tom Brady, like, with all of this, is we, we're not really getting the, this is the best I've ever felt in my career. Like, we're not <laughs> getting that. Because you know? <laughs> that once somebody says it's the best that they felt in their career, oh, they're done -zo. It's like, over. That is it. It's, it's over. It's in over. It's over. I'm in the best shape. I feel like I'm 30 again. Uh, but the thing is, with Tom Brady, Tom Brady's like, I always feel like I'm 25. I have the TB12 method. Exactly. <laughs> but but he's been like, but he's been on this for so long though. Like there's no difference in 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 T I think too, like because we haven't had that drop in production, like you said, it doesn't elicit the same questions that it would about him being forced out or any of these things, you know? Right. And and so like for a team like Tampa, of course you're gonna want him back. And and of course you're not gonna put any pressure to get an announcement a decision from him because it's like, hey, we get time back, like we're cool, you know? That's all they need. And that's real talk. All we need to do is get Tom Brady. Except, like, I thought his numbers were better last year than he was. I thought that was the case the year before, too. Mm -hmm. Like, that, the Super Bowl season wasn't all good. In that playoff run, he wasn't all good. Um, and then the defense really brought it in the Super Bowl where the Chiefs couldn't block and all of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I'll be curious to see. I don't think this Tampa team is probably going to be as good because some bills came due. Some dudes needed their paper. As they should. What's this going to look like? As they should. Yeah, they've already lost a couple guys on the defensive side. They got a lot of uh, they got a lot of free agents uh, that they got to work through. I think Godwin's what on franchise tax, so at least they bring him back on the offensive side. But yeah, they got they got questions that they need to answer and reshuffling of some finances. But I would still say with Brady back that they would still be one of the top. Would you say three, maybe four at worst teams in the NFC? Well, so because that's the thing, because it's it's a it's a weak. Sorry for cutting off. It's a weaker division as compared to the AFC. Well, that's what I was about. Well, well, it's a weaker conference, but then that specific, I mean, yes. but, but that specific division yeah. is looking like boo boo. We got the Saints in transition. Mm -hmm. We got the Falcons. You know. We got the Panthers. You know. And then you got the Bucks, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. So it's a it's a weak it's a weak division, and then and then looking at conference wide, what is it? Green Bay, the Rams, and whatever the Cowboys are. Like that's for the most part that's that's your only competition to get back to a Super Bowl. So it's very much in reach. And to your point, the Bucks probably aren't going to be as good as they were the last couple of years. But there's no reason why they shouldn't be one of the top three teams in the NFC this coming season. Well, except if maybe your old quarterback gets old. Like but every we, yeah, every year, like there's going to be a year. I don't necessarily know what the year is going to be, but there's always it's going to be a year when uh -huh. it happens, and we're going to see it because until it becomes like visible to people, nobody's going to stop betting on Tom Brady. Right. You know, nor, like there. And nor sh and nor should they, and nor should they as well. You know, like we, like we said that we thought that towards the end of his time in, in New England that you know he was you know the skill level and this that and the third or whatever. But then he still was able to parlay that to a you know a championship in Tampa. Yeah. So I, I will not, tell you I'm this not, though, I'm not betting against the dude. I'm sorry, I'm not betting yeah, against. Yeah, I, I will tell you this though, if he had been back up there in New England throwing to them dudes, he'd have, we'd have been like, yo man, I think it might be time to hang it up, dog. All right, like that. That 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 he he I give this to Tom Brady and it's no shade. He went he like we not Kevin Durant for going to a ready made champion. Tom Brady was like, no, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm like, yeah, we get it, we get it. Now, granted, <laughs> Kevin Durant obviously younger, you know, it's a bunch of stuff to it. But anytime somebody gets on somebody like, yo, why'd you go to a team that was that good? Because I'm not stupid. Right. Like I, I like I like winning. Thank you very much. I appreciate yes. that. Right. Like like why am I not gonna take this house with the granite countertops and the subway backsplash <laughs> in the kitchen? Nah, the subway tiles. Like that's what I want. Nah, give me that. I'll take that every day. Yeah, no, nah, I guess we'll see what this NFL season's uh gonna be. Somebody gonna have to get some Jimmy G. Somebody gonna get on some Mitchell T. You know what I'm saying? Somebody gonna even roll the dice on one legged Jameis. It's just gonna be a lot going on. And and that's the weird thing too, like throughout this offseason talking about the quarterback position, because we talked there was a, actually a debate yesterday about whether or not, you know, Deshaun Watson is a top five quarterback, and people were saying how tough of an argument that is, looking at how the top quarterbacks in the league. But then once you get past that top 
seven-ish quarterbacks is a steep drop. And, and, the, and the quarterback play, as we're seeing, like with some of these names thrown out, with the Mitchell Trubis- Trubisky's of the world and the, and the Jameis Winston, like it's the quarterback play is not as great as you would think. Like, yeah, they're the elite guys, but after that, it's a lot of meh. Well, like, let's just look at elite talents, right? Like not necessarily guys that have become or are elite quarterbacks, but we'll just call it for purposes of this discussion, elite talents. I'm counting these guys as an elite talent. Um, I think Russell Wilson has fallen off, but Russell Wilson, elite talent. Mm-hmm. Um, Justin Herbert, elite talent. Matthew Stafford. I would say Dak Prescott. Patrick Mahomes. Josh Allen, my God. <laughs> um, Aaron Rodgers. I'll put Joe Burrow in this category. Mm-hmm. Deshaun Watson. Lamar Jackson. That's 10. I could be missing somebody in this run that was off the top of my head, but I don't know what ele- uh, Trevor Lawrence, I guess, right? Uh, but I don't know what 11 talking about. <laughs> like, like, right. once you, like once you get past that, it is kind of like, ooh, these guys aren't nearly as good. Right, and there's still a lot of court, court, uh, question marks, like a Kyler Murray who, who wouldn't be in that yeah. top 10. But Yeah, I think but he you, might, but he's an elite talent, I'd say. Elite talent, absolutely. You got to see a little more consistency from him, but he, he's at least there. But, like, the drop-off after that, like, it is a steep drop. And and that's why you got some of these guys who are going to be propped up, like like Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, game manager at best, probably backup, but he's going to be somebody starting quarterback next year because the landscape is just not that great. Yep. So, yeah, and, and, and uh, that's coming, and that's coming from somebody who's seeing it day in and day out with his starting quarterback of his football team in the New York <laughs> Giants. <laughs> it's so different than when you were a kid. Oh, oh gosh! Uh, like we had like, with, with Phil Sims, and and you know, even later on with Eli once he you know figured it out during the playoff runs. Um, but yeah, <laughs> this this with this product right now. Mm, mm. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, let me ask you right quick as we're wrapping up. Did you get a chance mm-hmm. to check out uh, the homies uh, show on HBO? Yes, and and I want to say, too, like, like this was so awesome. Like, I know you were, you were texting me about it, and but I wanted to experience it, like, as a, as, a, as a fan, as a viewer watching it, and it was awesome. Like, it was, it was so dope to see, like, just the maturation in you and the growth that you've, like, I'm, I got a front row seat to all of it. So, like, this is dope from my perspective to see all of it and, and watching you in that realm and that spectrum was just, that was just awesome. Like I was, I, I couldn't stop smiling. So I'm extremely proud of you and the things that you do and what, and your contributions, not only to, you know, this, this medium, but you know, my life is as well. I can't, you know, thank you enough with that. And I know it sounds cheesy and all that stuff, but dog, I'm so proud of you, my man. Dude, I appreciate it, and I wanted. I, I didn't ask you that. Obviously, you were like, "Yo, fishing for yeah, a couple of bits." Of course, but right. but the, a big part of why I wanted to say, bring it up though, is for me and you, man. We had ideas of what would work on content way back. Like people don't get it when we were doing this Saturday show, and I was getting something like a hundred dollars to do these three-hour shows, <laughs> and Shannon had a day job and was working this on the weekend. We were still on the phone during the week, like cooking yeah. up ideas for what we were going to come up with. We had the big dummy of the week. It sucks to be you, like all of this stuff. And even right. when I got the job with the satellite people, and I would be at home getting sound for fake documentaries and sending the sound to Shannon and sending him a check so he could come together and cut it up and put it all together. It's like, that's the work that we were doing back in the day before a lot of people even knew who we were. Honestly, we're even thinking in these terms. Like, remember, we were thinking about to get podcasts out off the radio station before that station even realized that there was a value in doing right. these things and all of that. And when I looked up at that show, I thought about us. Because, like, we, we really started cooking this up on Saturday morning. You know, we right. really started cooking this up where we treated that Saturday morning show like it was an afternoon drive show. Mm-hmm. And... That's the that was like the best lesson for me on any of this was that like if you love it you just do it like you love it, mm-hmm. and that's what we did. I always man, thank you. Cause that, and, like, and, and if, we ain't doing this like this otherwise. Right, and and it's and it's dope to see because I know the grind and I know the work that you put in that a lot of people don't see how like you're on like you're on this and 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 to see you know game theory and see you know Rod being part of this like an extension of the morning jokes like all of this stuff man like it is just so like awesome to see and then I'm just I'm I'm so excited about what the future holds with with all of this stuff man. Dude, I appreciate you, man. I thank you so much. And that is Shannon Penn. Check him out 
ESPN Radio in the afternoons with Chris Canty. It's a very technical description. Also, I believe the type. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> my man, thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching on YouTube. And thanks so much for listening to The Right Time. We do this three times a week. Gabe Bassane and Adi Khan handling things behind the scenes. Thank you, gentlemen. Remember, follow The Right Time. Rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are. Hey, we'll talk to you guys in a couple of days. Take it easy.